Okay, now we're going to talk about magnetic fields. This would be the field around a bar magnet or an, an electromagnet or any type of magnet. And I'm going to try to help you understand it and to visualize it. And I'm going to explain this by comparing it to two other types of fields that we've already talked about, gravitational fields and electric fields. So let's start here with gravitational fields. Now the main idea is this. If you have some mass, so let's draw a mass here, I'll call it M. This could be the Earth, for example. Every mass has a gravitational field around it. And we represent the field with these lines, these field lines. And I'm going to draw them as arrows. And I'm going to draw them always pointing inward. And that's because gravity attracts. It always pulls. Any object near the Earth will be pulled toward the Earth by the Earth's gravity. And that's what the inward direction of these arrows represents. And there's a few things you can see from this visual picture of the field. You can see that these lines are closer together here closer to the Earth. And they're farther apart as you get further away. And they extend, they continue to extend. So if you go very far away, they get very far apart. And what that represents is the fact that the gravitational force weakens with distance. That idea is captured in this visual representation of the field. And also the direction is captured here by the direction of the arrows. So this gives us a way to picture the field. Now it's not a perfect picture. Recognize that there is gravity in between these lines. The gravitational field doesn't just exist right along the field lines. But the field lines help us picture the field. We can see that it's all around the mass and that it's inward. And that it's more intense closer to the Earth. All of those ideas show up in this picture. And we say that the gravitational field is just this region of space around a mass that is affected gravitationally by the mass. Now it really extends infinitely. These lines go on forever. But they spread out so much that it, if you get far enough away from the Earth, the field is so small that we can ignore it. We, we say it gets negligibly small after, after you get far enough away. So we consider the field to be around the Earth and every mass, not just the Earth, but every mass has a gravitational field. Smaller objects have a much smaller gravitational field. It's only noticeable around something really big like a planet, but every mass has a gravitational field around it. We can say that a mass is a source of a gravitational field. Or we might say that a mass produces a gravitational field, or that a gravitational field is caused by the mass. It is caused to exist because of the mass. Now in a similar way, we have electric fields. So let's suppose we have a charged particle here. And I'll put some plus signs in here to represent a, a nice big positive charge on this object. And I'll use some lines to draw an electric field and these will be field lines just like the gravitational field but this will represent an electric field and I'm going to draw these lines going out now gravity always attracts but electricity can attract or repel so the field lines could be outward or inward if this were a negatively charged object the field lines would be inward but around a positively charged object the field the field lines are outward and again, the lines give us a way to visualize the field, and they capture certain aspects of the field. And again, we see that the, the lines are closer together, close to the mass, representing a more intense field, or close to the charge, rather. And as we move away from the charge, the lines spread out, representing the field getting weaker at greater distances. Now, the point is this. If there is a charge, then there is an electric field around it. Just as every mass has a gravitational field, every charge has an electric field around it. We can say that the electric charge is the source of the electric field, or that the charge produces the field, or that the field is caused by the charge. Now with that in mind, let's talk about a magnetic field. Let's suppose we have a piece of wire with some electric current in it. So here's a wire. And I'm going to draw some little negative signs in here. And these represent electrons moving through the wire. So let's say there's some electrons moving through the wire in that direction. If there is charge moving through the wire, it turns out you get a magnetic field around the wire. And the field lines are going to be drawn as loops going around the wire like this. They're closed loops. Look something like that. 
And here's the idea. Every moving charge has a magnetic field around it. And that's just the way the universe is. Every mass has a gravitational field. Every charge has an electric field. And every moving charge has a magnetic field. And we can draw these field lines to help us visualize the field. So we say that a moving charge is the source of a magnetic field, or that a moving charge produces a magnetic field, or that a magnetic field is caused by a moving charge. That's fundamentally the source of any magnetic field. And this is why the electric current, if you remember Orsted's experiment, he had the electric current flowing through a wire and had a magnetic compass nearby. And when he turned on the circuit and current went through the wire, the compass needle deflected, and he wasn't expecting that. But he noticed it, and he realized that there was this connection between electricity and magnetism. And this is it. Moving electric charge produces a magnetic field. Now, there's some differences between these fields. I've drawn them all with yellow lines, but there are some important differences. I mentioned that gravity always attracts, but electric and magnetic fields both can either attract or repel. And one other difference has to do with the magnetic poles. Just as we have positive and negative charges, we have opposite magnetic poles. We call them north and south. But you can take a positive charge all by itself, or a negative charge all by itself. You can separate those. You can't separate north and south magnetic poles. The way a physicist would say it is, there are no magnetic monopoles. Monopole being a single pole. You can't get an isolated magnetic pole like you can an isolated magnetic charge. Magnetic poles always come in pairs. So those are a couple of differences between the magnetism and the electricity and the gravity. And while we're on the topic of magnetic fields, let's uh, say a few things about the magnetic field around a bar magnet, because bar magnets are fairly common. Diagrams like this one are pretty, uh, pretty routinely appear in physics textbooks or physical science textbooks. This is a bar magnet. It has a north pole and a south pole. And if you put another bar magnet near it, it would be attracted or repelled, uh, depending on which poles were coming close to each other. Like poles would repel and opposite poles would would attract. But you see the, the field lines here and they're drawn going from north to south and there's some little arrow markings on these indicating the direction. The field lines go, they, they have a direction, they point from north to south. And what this picture does is gives us an ability to see or visualize the shape of the field around a bar magnet. And we can see some things about the field similar to what we saw about the gravitational and the electric field. Here in this region close to the magnet, the lines are closer together representing a more intense field. Out here, far away from the magnet, the lines are further apart. And you can see the same thing happening here. Here the lines are very close together and then as we move further away from the magnet they spread out, they're much further apart. And where they're more spread out that represents a weaker field and where they're closer together that represents a more intense field. And here's one more image. Images like this are, are fairly common too because this is actually a little experiment that's easily done. You can take a bar magnet and sit it down on a tabletop and place a white sheet of paper over it and sprinkle some iron filings on top of it. And the iron filings are just little tiny slivers of iron. But iron is easily magnetized and the little slivers line up with the magnetic field. So you can see very clearly the direction of the field lines. You could trace them uh, by, uh, by considering the direction in which the iron filings have oriented themselves. And this shows two things. One, it shows that there definitely is a field around the magnet. The iron filings don't have to be in contact with the magnet to be affected. They're affected at a distance. You know, these little iron filings up here turn one way and iron filings in a different place turn another way but they are affected by the magnet. There is indeed this region of space around the magnet where things are affected magnetically, and that is the magnetic field, this region of space around the magnet where things are affected magnetically. And you, then you can also see the shape or the direction of the field lines based on the orientation of the iron filings.